This meeting okay. is being so, recorded. Madam, since this is your first interview, so you will start yeah. with your introduction. So, hi, sir. My name is Neha Mate. Uh, I'm a BCom graduate from the batch of 2019. Uh, I have cleared my CFA level one, born and brought up in Mumbai. Uh, I am now working in the investment banking department for BDO and I've been working since uh, May 2021 up till now. And uh, this year I plan on pursuing my MBA. Okay, so will you also throw some light over your family detail and uh, so, your education? Uh, so my, I've done my schooling from uh, St. Anthony's uh, and uh, family, mom is a teacher, dad is a businessman and my sister is a consultant with Hindustan Unilever Limited. Okay, so, so is she younger to you or elder to you? My sister is 10 years elder to me. 10 years older. So how, how do you have, what kind of relationship do you have with your sister? She is like a more motherly figure to you or... You also have sibling fights among yourself. Within um, yourself. <clears throat> given the tenure gap, uh, maybe when you, I was small and uh, immature, it was more of a hate relationship wherein there were more fights because obviously I was the younger one. So I could I would I was let off with a lot of things, however naughty or notorious I was. But I think over the years, you know, when I've come to my teenage and now uh, you know, as you know, I am becoming more mature. The relationship is more of motherly, like, you know, she's my second mother. And, you know, if I have issues in life, I can go to her. Like, there's more understanding. There's more love now. It's not like before. So we're more closer now compared to what we were when I was a small child. Okay. So what is the impact of her on your education and personality? Uh, I think my sister's impact is not much on my education because my sister is not well in academics. If uh, it's someone's impact has been on my education has been my aunt because uh, my aunt really excelled well in her career and I've always looked up to her and I wanted to have a career exactly like my aunt. So if it's someone's impact on my education has been my aunt. Okay. And and what have she studied? My aunt, is, uh, my aunt <clears throat> has done her uh, BCom. But over the years, she's worked with Star Plus and she's, you know, she's been, she's held like very strategic positions in the organization. She's worked for Walt Disney. Then she's also worked for Unilever's. So I think it's her career path and, you know, how she's, how with just, uh, you know, like coming from very humble backgrounds and starting small, she's gotten to a very um, high point in her career. So I'm really like impressed with her. Okay. And, and how was your school life, Martha? What kind of personality did you have in your school? I was an introvert in during my school life. I have not had many friends and uh, school life was not great. I think I was a very a lonely person in school life and uh, I've been bullied also in school. So school wasn't the greatest experience for me. Okay. So so did you do something or anything against the person or people who, who used to bully you or you no, just ignored I... the entire instance or... <clears throat> I never really did anything because uh, the, the ones bullying or boys, so there, there, there was always that fear that they might retaliate in a way I don't want. And so that never really, uh, you know, uh, got me to uh, get them and, you know, like take them to the books. But I think today those same people have apologized to me for what they've done in the past, but I've never really taken action against them. Yeah, so, so, so don't you think that uh, when you experienced that and you could not do anything, so, so do you think to do anything for other uh, girls who are still in school and then might have, uh, might be encountering the similar? I'm very <clears> sure <throat> girls do encounter this. And uh, I think it was very, uh, uh, you know, like stupid of me to not bring this to my parents at notice because it was not just uh, like easy. Like it was not like, okay, they were just bullying me for like, you know a short period it was like for a long period like two years and uh, that kind of used to make me scared to go to school and today if I was given an opportunity I would ask you know principals and teachers to be more um, understanding and you know ask students more happy. okay Mia, if I'll ask uh, make a plan something and as an uh, civil society or as an NGO or, or someone from outside the system <clears throat> to make a plan something to bring this issue on the front page and mm -hmm. let everybody be aware about this and let other people get involved so that all the girls or all the uh, mm -hmm. child should feel that strength that people are with me. So mm -hmm. if I ask you to plan something, 
uh, how do you do that can you plan something like anything like that to plan something i first i think would be is to you know like the person who's being bullied you have to take them into assurance that doing you know like bringing this out there to the public won't cause any serious uh, you know like physical harm to them i think and the other plan would be that you know schools should have this uh, counselor that maybe comes in once in a month that you know has a one to one session with children and you know but but this you cannot make sure no but the, you have to do anything that you can do from outside the system because you cannot ask a school to have a counselor you cannot ask government to make a policy like this what i told you or what i asked you if hmm. you were to do something hmm. and you know, to create the awareness or bring the topic into the consideration what hmm. will you do plan something for that do not suggest a school to have a counselor to plan something for that so you have a problem mm-hmm. that you want to do mm-hmm. something for those students mm-hmm. so so you cannot ask school no you cannot ask to go mm-hmm. to every schools management and ask for a have a counselor mm-hmm. you cannot ask the government to do something for anything mm-hmm. again you can you can ask but you have you should have a, a number of wise with you you know to ask government to do something so you mm-hmm. can plan for that also but but you need to plan something <clears throat> plan mm-hmm. that's a good question i don't think i have a plan ready as of now but i think um, i think creating more awareness around it and you know maybe just trying to bring my story out there you know in the public and in, i think in the public domain and then probably encouraging others to do the same thing you know like and not just taking it and being okay with being bullied is what i could do it's like the most simple, easiest plan i could think of right now okay so remind me something to give you as a feedback after the interview if i forget mm-hmm. this point so let's okay. go ahead <clears throat> so matlab uh, you did your schooling and I, and i was actually i was asking your school and education path and how did you mm-hmm. uh, pick what subject in plus 2 and then how did you pick preparation mm-hmm. so can you uh, give a story of that that so your uh, choice I, of education path ha huh? so uh, uh, in 10th i scored like 90% so i had this uh, inclination that you know since i've scored this well i would want to do science and you know choose to be a doctor but uh, i think a reality hit hard in 11th is uh, because my mom's a single mother so it's kind of uh, it's kind of difficult for her to fund my um, i think for that period it was difficult for her to you know fund my education and you know like make me a doctor and then also reality hit hard in other terms is that science was really tough for me so i couldn't really score well in my 12th like i scored like 64% even after uh, working hard enough so i think from that instance i shifted completely to commerce and i took up accounting and uh, uh, you know uh, marketing and all those subjects in college and i think uh, that was a great decision made by me because i truly enjoyed those subjects and uh, post my uh, graduation i decided to do my uh, level 1 cfa and mba Okay, so what what did motivate you to do this CFA? Uh, I from start knew that maybe maybe from my second year of uh, graduation I realized that I wanted to do something in finance, and uh, I had a war with my professors. So I didn't want to do my CA because uh, that's not something that attracted me. So uh, one of my professors su- suggested I do my CFA. Uh, i obviously didn't jump into it at the first instance i did my research i went through the list of topics i even went through the curriculum uh, a little beforehand before i could you know make this concrete decision of wanting to do my cfa so one thing that really motivated me was a variety of subjects so it's like it gave me a flavor of the different areas in finance so be it the conventional finance to being it something that is very relatively new and i think because of cfa i think that opened my thinking a little more and uh, if today if i didn't have my cfa and someone asked me what i wanted to do in finance i would be confused i wouldn't have a sure sure answer but today i have these three fields that you know i'm very sure of and uh, i want to make my career in these three fields so i think cfa was mainly to open my decision making process and to give me that area in finance or just those two areas in finance that i would really love to uh, you know work in or make my career in for the rest of the what are those two area two areas uh, 
now one will be corporate finance and investment banking and the other one is you know the alternative investments like it can be venture capital or private equity okay so so i'll have two questions and i'll just state both of these two questions at once because i don't want to forget any of them first that you did say that we are not good for in science uh, hmm. was it really meant that you are not good in mathematics or uh, was it like you were, you were not you are good in mathematics and not good in physics or other subjects of science and the second think, question is yes. uh, okay second question i'll ask later so you can just answer this First. I think I was not good in physics and maths, so it didn't. I didn't really understand what was uh, happening, and it was more of rote learning. So I realized that rote learning is not going to take me long. Okay. And, uh, so, 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 how do you think that there will be a lot of maths that will be uh, that will be facing ahead in the in the financial sector or in corporate yeah. finance or even for the investment yeah. banking part? So, yeah. how do you manage that? And 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 have you have do you have any plan for that? so uh, cfa does have uh, quants as a uh, subject that you have to attempt and uh, the kind of quants that i had in cfa is not something i was dreading or uh, you know fearful of it is something i liked and something i could really do but uh, when, when it came to maths and science it was completely dreadful like i didn't even want can you give to... me some examples of of what mathematics was there in CFA, CFA is, uh, I think, very basic. Like you know, finding the present value of a investment. It's more of compounding, finding the future value. And this wasn't something I had to do manually. This was everything I was doing with the help of a calculator. Uh, we had probability in CFA. Uh, uh, then we had uh, something called as uh, there were these chan. There, there were these. Uh, they, they are called tests, like the F test, and you know some more tests that basically tell you. the probability that you know your returns for a particular month will be uh, in the 95% range or yeah, so, you know, so can you explain jet test for me <laughs> oh god i need to revise sorry okay uh, and what about uh, can you tell me about probability distribution so i think your screen is uh, frozen sorry i think the network issue was well, I mean, the, ha huh, the question was like uh, ca can you define probability distribution probability hmm. probability distribution would be like it's giving you a likelihood ki tumhara jo outcome hai wo ye range mein lie karega okay but but it's not okay hmm. uh, so matlab <clears throat> and what all you have studied in calculus or other than stats what have you studied nothing calculus, there no was calculus. nothing no no nothing from calculus so so how do you think that what will be doing what is what will be your focus area in sibm focus area in sibm uh, of I course think... it will be finance but since you'll hmm. be taking hmm. finance but but still uh, how do you plan the next two year with my focus area in sibm firstly is uh, uh, you know i the is like through the curriculum i would want to explore more areas that i might be interested in second is i want to be more focused on the internships that i get in and i think the last semester that is more on investment banking that would be my uh, i think that would be the area i want to focus more in because right now i'm working in investment banking but what i'm doing is not uh, like in depth investment banking it's very like uh, oh like very like basic stuff because i'm an intern so i'm obviously not uh, i'm not dealing with the core investment banking so the last semester something i will look forward to wherein i will maybe get more uh, you know in depth understanding of what exactly goes on and not something that i'm currently doing at office and one would be financial modeling okay so 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 you stay in pune no i stay in mumbai okay you stay in mumbai So, what all cities have you visited in India? Uh, I've been to Jaipur, uh, Assam, and uh, that's all. Jaipur and Assam. I haven't been anywhere else. I was asking about cities. Acha, Jaipur cities, okay, city. cities. Assam is. Just... I've been to uh, Pune. I've been to yeah. I've been to Pune, Jaipur, and I've been to Darjeeling. Yeah. So, so have you stayed in Jaipur and Pune for more than one week or? 
something jaipur like uh, i have visited twice so i have stayed for jaipur pushkar and all i have visited twice so i have stayed for like like in rajasthan you can say i have stayed for more than a week but jaipur and all was 2 3 days not more okay. so we'll ask you to to differentiate the two city jaipur and mumbai so hmm. can you give me five differences that you observed jaipur and mumbai i think mumbai uh, you know everybody is in this uh, hurry and you know it's a very fast moving city but in jaipur uh, i think what i realized was that it's very calm i mean uh, you don't have this there's not much of the hustle bustle uh, i think jaipur is known for much of its rich heritage whereas uh, mumbai would be you know known for its uh, is just for its concrete buildings and you know the uh, companies that uh, are in mumbai third would be um, i think jaipur is really well known for its handicraft and something you know you won't maybe not in mumbai you might come across in maharashtra but something i don't think you will really come across in mumbai if you find maybe that is really bought in from the other uh, cities five different never thought something like this could be um okay, okay. so so <clears throat> the last question for you will be uh, what was your lockdown matlab how was your lockdown period what did you do uh, what was your routine and and did you feel any stress or uh, emotional stress lockdown time? period was uh, stressful uh, first i i and uh, i was looking for an internship but uh, because my cf exams were like hardly uh, we went in a lockdown in march and my cf exam was in may so i thought maybe if i take an internship after the may period it would be better but uh, the cf exams kept getting pro- prolonged and uh, finding an internship kept getting tough and it kind of you know added more stress to my uh, you know because i was kind of worried that i'm going to have a gap and then when i go for an uh, apply for an mba again nobody would want to hire me because i'm having this gap and i don't have experience and my profile is not good enough so i think these were reasons that stressed me but on the brighter side uh, i started baking and cooking very often and uh, i i used to i just given my neighbor a cake for a birthday and she really liked it so i think baking was something i should do very often for people in the colony used to give me orders or friends used to give me orders i didn't do that for money i just did that for like you know like it was just like this um time away from life where i'm not thinking about which b school will hire me or what is going to happen in life and uh, i remember uh, i even i used to have something where i used to uh, sell masks because i had i procured it from someone for very cheap and everybody around me used to ask me so i started that as a side business which i don't do anymore but i think uh, apart from all this lockdown was very stressful because in everything that was on my mind was no b school will hire me because i have this massive gap and i will never clear my cfa so that was all that really went in my mind during the lockdown yeah, so so now i will ask ki uh, how do you justify your gap years how will you do that uh, i think 2019 when immediately i graduated uh, i was appearing for cat so in in may i graduated and october november there was cat so i wanted the may to november period to just prepare and uh, not work and gradually then what happened was november december jan i kept giving exams so there was no time then uh, jan i had enrolled for cfa so i thought uh, if it's in may then maybe i'll just give the exam and you know uh, then maybe appear for then maybe sit for an interview or look for an internship uh, and simultaneously i was still preparing for my mba exams so i had not given up on mba um but uh, then the lockdown happened and uh, the may exams got shifted to july so i kind of thought i have june and july so i can kind of just use these extra two months to prepare more but the exams kept getting prolonged i was looking for internships at the same time but i was like really unable to find anything because um i even i was ready to work for free at a point but uh, i couldn't find anything but if i uh, but my two years were mostly some where time that i spent on studying and finally after like two years i could find an internship but again this was like an article ship and not a proper proper internship okay thank you very much so <clears throat> yeah matlab uh, since the first interview i used to take to understand the personality only uh, because an interview where you will be assessed in Uh, around five to six criteria like uh, hmm. your communication your subject awareness your career goals hmm. uh, your um, uh, yeah uh, awareness towards business or gk hmm. you know, so we check one all this so 
uh, when we take a proper interview you uh, we matlab <coughs> i used to ask all the question and that is possible to check that to maine wo rahi rakha abhi abhi mera zyada tar focus tha tumhe samajhne ka ki hum next time interview kaise lenge to kuch kuch cheeze to main bahut clearly point out karunga ki ek to maine tumhe remind karne ke liye bola tha wo kya tha aur aap maine bolta na aap reviews doge ha wo kis baat ka tha सर आई थिंक नहीं आपने से बोला था मुझे कि एंड ऑफ द इंटरव्यू याद दिलाना कि इस पॉइंट पे बोलेंगे वो क्या था कौन सा पॉइंट था किसी और को याद है नीलम कुछ तो कहीं पे था मैं बोला कि इस आंसर पे मैं रिव्यू दूंगा बिकॉज़ आई डिडंट वांटेड टू ब्रेक द इंटरव्यू इन इन बिटवीन किसी को याद है सर आई थिंक हमने कहा था कि एंड ऑफ द इंटरव्यू याद करना मैं भूल ना जाऊं फीडबैक देने को हाँ, फीडबैक तो ऐसे भी देना होता है उस पॉइंट हाँ. पे देना था वो कौन सा क्वेश्चन था चलो वी कैन सी द वीडियो अगेन हम बीच में अभी फिर तो एक तो तुमको वो करना है आ, क्या बोलते हैं प्रोबेबिलिटी और स्टार्ट देखना है क्योंकि वो फिनांस में ऐसे भी तुम्हें पूछेंगे मैथ्स का पार्ट तो और अगर तुम्हें नहीं वो ठीक से आता है तो हमारे ही चैनल पे स्टार्ट के जो वीडियो है ना वो पहले सारा देख लो फटाफट ठीक है तीन लेक्चर्स है वो देख लो कोई चीज जो तुम्हें याद है मतलब कंफ्यूजिंग लगे तो मुझसे अलग से पूछ लो ठीक है किसी पर्टिकुलर क्योंकि भले ही कैलकुलेशन मशीन करती है मैक बोल रही है हाँ बोलिंग वाला ठीक है गुड मैक थैंक यू तो तो जैसे भले ही ज्यादातर जो कैलकुलेशन है वो मशीन कर रही है बट उसकी रेसनैलिटी तुम्हें पता होनी चाहिए तो बोथ ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट यू टोल्ड मी अबाउट प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन और जेड टेस्ट वो टेस्ट का भी सही पर्पस तुम्हें नहीं पता था और प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन का भी तो ठीक है कैलकुलेशन फॉर्मूला तुम्हें याद भले ना हो बट बेसिक टूल का पर्पज तुम्हें पता होना चाहिए है ना बैकग्राउंड पता होना चाहिए वो मैटर ऑफ थ्री लेक्चर्स है वो देख लेना और डाउट के साथ हमें हमसे पूछ लेना ठीक है दूसरा जब आ, मतलब तो तुम्हारा पूरा ओवरऑल जो इंटरव्यू है ना वो मतलब एम वाला नेचर दिखाता नहीं है तुम्हारा तो यू नीड टू पुट दैट फैक्टर इन योर इंटरव्यू कि थोड़ा जैसे हम हमको बहुत देर तक नहीं दिखा तो मैंने तुमसे बोला कि चलो कंपेयर करो दो सिटी को है ना आ, जैसे मैंने तुमसे पूछा कि बुलेंग वाले के लिए हमें कुछ बता के बताओ तो जब भी तुम बताने के लिए बताना तुम्हें एक 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 होलसम प्लान बनाना चाहिए कि आई मेक अ पेज ऑन फेसबुक I'll I'll make a page of Insta. I'll try to to add all my friends first, you know, and ask them to share their stories, you know. hmm. uh, इस तरह से तुम्हें करना होगा देन आई कैन आस्क फॉर फंड रेजिंग एंड वी कैन क्रिएट अ मीटिंग इन अ पर्टिकुलर पार्क और कहीं पे पार्क में हम कर सकते हैं अरेन्ज सो दैट मीडिया गेट्स अटेंशन मीडिया मतलब वी कैन गेट द मीडिया अटेंशन सो दैट मीडिया कैन राइट ऑन इट एंड वी कैन रेज आवर वॉयस एंड एंड आस्क फॉर आस्क गवर्नमेंट टू Come with the policies against it. So, my dear, what is it? So, a structured plan to give you. That is strategic. That you are making a, a one month, two month, three month based plan or activity based plan. Hello. Hmm. So, video off. Can you see? Abhi, uske karan bhi net disturb ho raha hoga. So, I think my internet is bad. Can I turn my video Haan, off? Haan, mujhe sun. Video off. Kar do. To jada better rahega. तो तो उसमें तुम्हें एक एक स्ट्रेटजिक थोड़ा अप्रोच से बात करनी पड़ेगी तो थोड़ा उसमें क्या है ना कि जैसे जो हम तुम्हें लेक्चर शेयर किए हैं मैनेजमेंट वाला वो सब भी तुम एक बार देख लो सारा ठीक है एक बार हम उसको सारा और अलग से कंपाइल कर देते हैं उसको देख लो तो थोड़ा बहुत तुम्हारे बातचीत में ना मैनेजमेंट के वो देखने लगेंगे थोड़ा इसको स्कोप नहीं बोलेंगे उसका मतलब दैट यू थिंक स्ट्रेटेजिकली मतलब इट्स नॉट जस्ट बात कि तुमको वो कैटेगराइज नहीं कर पा रहे हो कि कैसे इवेंट मतलब कैसे एग्जीक्यूट करना है या फिर हाउ डू वी थिंक इन टर्म ऑफ इफेक्टिवनेस ठीक है तो वो वो तुम्हें थोड़ा बातचीत में लाना पड़ेगा हेलो अभी आवाज भी आ रही है तुम्हें हेलो 